a vascular necrosis is loss of blood supply leading to death of bone tissue. It commonly affects the hips, even though there are other joints in the body that are also affected. Any condition that causes blockade of blood supply to any part of the bone can cause a vascular necrosis. In the hip example, there are small blood vessels that supply the head of the hip. The hip joint is actually made of a socket and a ball. When the blood supply to the ball is blocked by any type of condition, then we have a vascular necrosis of the hip. So the symptoms of a vascular necrosis could be growing pain, it could be thigh pain, and it could be posterior buttock pain. The vast majority of patients that present to us with a vascular necrosis actually complain of growing pain. The risk factors for a vascular necrosis can include prolonged use of steroid medication, it could include um, excessive use of alcohol. It also could include some medical conditions, things like sickle cell disease, like Gauthier's disease, like HIV disease, and even the treatment for HIV. To diagnose a vascular necrosis, we usually start with an x-ray. Unfortunately, in the early phases of this disease, it may not be readily seen on x-rays, so we have to get some advanced imaging, meaning things like MRI or CT scan. And so when we get MRI or CT scan, we are actually able to see some of the earlier phases or stages of a vascular necrosis. There are actually four stages of avascular necrosis. The most important thing to note is that the first two stages are pre-collapse and the later two stages are post-collapse. And when I am talking about collapse, I'm talking about the collapse of the bony tissue that sits right underneath the cartilage, which is the cushion of the hip joint. So when the bone is collapsed, we consider that an advanced stage of avascular necrosis. Before collapse, in the earlier two stages, we may still be able to salvage that hip joint. There are multiple treatments for avascular necrosis. Once the hip has collapsed, like I mentioned earlier, we cannot salvage the hip. And so we are subjected to doing a hip replacement, which involves the use of metal, special type of plastic and or some ceramics to replace the joint. However, prior to collapse, we may still be able to save the hip joint by doing a variety of procedures. One of the most common ones is called core decompression, which involves coring right into the hip joint to decompress the area that is dead and allow new bones to fill into that space. Surgery is not always indicated in the treatment of avascular necrosis, particularly if we see the patient prior to the collapse of the bone. Some of the treatment that we can consider before considering surgery includes physical therapy, some activity modification, some anti-inflammatory medications, electric stimulation, and even some osteoporotic medications have been used in some studies to relieve pain in patients with avascular necrosis. If a total hip replacement is needed for the treatment of avascular necrosis, the patient can actually start putting weight on the leg right away. And so the recovery process is relatively fast. And a lot of patients actually tell us that they feel much better almost immediately after surgery, but certainly within a few weeks after surgery. 
if the surgery required is the core decompression, then in those cases, we need to protect the patient's weight bearing for a few weeks before we let them get back to weight bearing activities and all their activities. Unfortunately, when we see patients in the office with a vascular necrosis, they are presenting in the later stages of the disease, and we have no choice but to do a total hip replacement. So if you or your family members are experiencing groin pain, thigh pain, or posterior buttock pain, please present to your doctor so that we can examine you and treat you as needed. Thank you.